Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned your subscription. And to everyone who's watching, if you enjoy this video and would like to show some support, click that thumbs up button. And if you really, really like my videos and would like to show some financial support, you can visit my eGuitar Plans website. There's a link in the description below, or you can visit the Highline Guitars merch store, which is displayed below the description for this video. And there you can purchase all kinds of different items and know that when you purchase something, not only are you helping the channel financially, but you're getting something in return. What I'm going to talk about in today's video is the next project. As you can see, my setup bench has no guitars on it. So it's time for me to come up with a new project. And in the last uh, video that I did for a project that was episode 17 of my V-shaped guitar build, and that guitar is completely finished and has been sent off to its new owner. So now I'm ready to start a new project. And if you watch my videos on a regular basis and follow my channel, you may have seen uh, where I posted a YouTube short that kind of teased the next project, which is going to be an electric violin. Why an electric violin? Why not? I've always wanted to have an electric violin, and I was kind of thinking it might be fun to step away from the solid body electric guitars and build something that is outside the box that I'm normally working in. I do that occasionally because I find that when you step outside of the norm and do something completely different, what you learn during that process can really help improve what you do normally. I learned this years ago when I built my first acoustic guitar. I wanted to do everything by scratch. And to do it, uh, I had to learn a lot of techniques and skills that I had never used before. And once the guitar was finished, and believe me, a lot of the processes that I had to do to accomplish completing that guitar, I had to do over and over. Because when it comes to acoustic guitars, craftsmanship has to be absolutely perfect. And as I was building the guitar, I ran into issues and I had to go back and redo some things. But by the time I had finished it, I had improved my craftsmanship to a level that I had never uh, realized I could achieve before. And I was able to apply what I learned to building my solid body electric guitars. And all of a sudden, the process of building solid body guitars uh, got a lot easier. And my confidence level in building those increased. And then anytime I had a challenge that I faced when building a solid body electric guitar, it was pretty easy to achieve success. So. Uh, Any time that you have an opportunity to step outside of the box is a great opportunity to improve your skills, even at what you do normally. So uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to jump on the computer and I'm going to show you the design concept for this violin and what's going to be involved. And in future episodes, like I have done in the past, we're just going to continue to progress through the build. So let's jump on the computer and I'll show you what this violin is going to look like. Okay, so this is the design that I am currently working on for this violin. And as you can see, it it does have some traditional styling cues that you would find in a traditional violin. But then as you can see, like with the uh, headstock, I've deviated from that tradition. And I'll explain why here in just a minute. But what I've done to create this is I downloaded a PDF of a violin that was drawn to scale. And I imported that into Adobe Illustrator. Then I just simply redrew the lines using that PDF as sort of a guide, a template. And I made some tweaks to the design, as you can see with this cutaway here. This is sort of uh, what you would see on a guitar rather than a violin. But the nice thing about an electric violin is you don't have to adhere to the 
shapes and dimensions and materials that you would find in a traditional acoustic violin because this instrument's going to have a pickup and is going to be amplified. So I can change the shape to whatever I want, really, uh, to make the violin. And if you do a search for electric violins, you're going to see that there are a lot of different cool looking shapes for violins and some of them get pretty wild and I didn't really want to get too wild with this because this is just a violin for myself that I'd like to learn to play on and I wanted to keep it looking like a, a traditional violin but with that one styling alteration by including that cutaway now the other modification that I made to the design rather than having a narrow headstock with tuning pegs on the side so that the strings come off the nut and then down into a slot like you would see on a traditional violin with a scroll at the end I decided I was going to use guitar tuners to hold the strings uh, that's a modern um, application of technology to the design of a violin so to do that I have to make the headstock wider to accommodate the tuning machines and I still wanted to incorporate that scroll concept in the end of the headstock so I went ahead and modeled that and I like it I think it's kinda cool um, one uh, viewer who saw this in one of my YouTube shorts said he felt it was too wide uh, and yes it is that's because our brains are trained to see the narrow headstock that uh, is found on a traditional violin shape and clearly this isn't going to be strictly traditional in its design so I can take liberties I think with the shape of the headstock so I think that'll work out well and the use of the guitar tuners is going to make it a little bit easier to tune the pegs or to tune the strings so um, but the rest of the violin the body is going to be carved on the CNC machine and it's going to be hollowed out so that'll help to save some of the weight now normally with a violin you have the sides are bent and then you have a top that's carved and then glued down into place what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carve the body in two pieces an upper half and then a lower half and I'll probably talk more about this in detail in the next episode as I show you what I'm doing to prepare the files to make this uh, right now I'm just concerned with explaining the concept here but I'll probably make the body out of mahogany like I said two halves those will be then glued together and I'm hoping that the weight will be an, uh, low enough to where I could pinch the violin between my shoulder and my chin and hold it there while I tune the strings uh, there may be a little bit of extra weight here I'm not sure this is sort of like a, a prototype concept but uh, we'll see if I can get that weight to something that's more reasonable. Uh, but we'll, you know, who knows? It's it, I'm kind of uh, pessimistic with respect to the weight. I think it's going to end up being a little bit heavier than a traditional violin. Now, as far as the electronics are concerned, most of your violin, electric violins, make use of piezo uh, type pickups, which are attached to the bridge which is just a floating bridge here and then they're usually wired either into a jack an output jack which you can then plug into your amplifier or you can plug it into a preamp before it goes into the amplifier and then other types use uh, again the piezo pickup but then they wire them into a built-in onboard preamp usually battery powered and from there it goes out to the amplifier and I've decided I think at least for now that I'm not going to use an onboard preamp because I don't want to add the weight I would rather 
have a simple uh, piezo attached to the bridge wired into a jack output jack that is mounted on top of or underneath the body and then from there I would plug it into a preamp and then go out to an amplifier and that I think would give me the signal I want now, as far as I know uh, preamps aren't absolutely necessary a lot of it depends on how the violin is sounding uh, with the amplifier that you've paired it with so I'll test it and see how it works and if I don't like it I can always pick up a an external preamp like a pedal preamp um, and they have preamps that have uh, tone controls and volume controls and such so you can manipulate the signal before it heads to the amp so we'll just see how that works out you know again I've never done this before so this is all new territory for me and um, as I said before it's this is a way to step outside of the box that I'm used to being in and trying something different so that I can hopefully expand my skills and improve my craftsmanship when building my traditional solid body electric guitars. So, um, but we'll see how that goes. Now, one thing you may have noticed as you look at this is I have not included the tailpiece or the chin rest. And the reason for that is because since this is a traditional violin shape, I can use an off the shelf tailpiece and chin rest on this violin. And the nice thing about those parts is they're not a permanent component that's that's attached to the violin or carved out of the violin. They're separate pieces which can be installed and removed whenever you want. So because this is a new concept for me to build, I'm just going to use off the shelf parts for now to get an idea of how they work and how they function with this violin. And down the road, if I decide I can make my own for better quality and replace the ones that I purchase off the shelf to install on this violin. Uh, you can purchase them in a variety uh, of um, online sources. Uh, I, I've seen them on Amazon, eBay, a lot of the music stores carry them. And they come often in a package that includes the tailpiece, the chin rest, uh, as well as tuners for the, the headstock, and even a bridge. So uh, I'll just use the tailpiece, the chin rest, and I may even use the bridge itself. And I'll install those and see how they work and, and how I feel about them. And if, if, they're, if I like them, then I'll just leave it as is. But if I want to change them to maybe improve their performance or how they appear with the rest of the instrument, I can always create the 3D files and then write the G code and carve them out on my CNC machine. But since they're so inexpensive, I don't see any reason to fabricate my own now when I can just use the off the shelf parts to get an idea of how they, they perform. So that's how I'm gonna handle that. So that's the basic concept for the design of this electric violin. And I still have some work to do on it and I, uh, some more decisions that I need to make as I progress uh, towards the actual construction of the violin. In the next episode, part two, I plan to explain in more detail how I'm going to set up the files that I'm going to use to cut the body, the neck, and the fretboard on my CNC machine. So that should be pretty interesting because this is going to involve some completely different techniques and approaches from what I have done in the past building my solid body electric guitar. So uh, be sure to check that out. In, in the meantime, though, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. Visit eGuitarPlants.com. Visit my Highland Guitars merch store down below. And I hope to see you in the next episode as we progress through this project. Take care and stay safe.